say the word odradek is of Slavonic origin and try to account for on that basis. Others again believe to be of German origin, only influenced by Slavonic. The uncertainty of both interpretations allows one to assume with justice that neither is accurate, especially as neither of them provides an intelligent meaning of the word. No one, of course, would occupy himself with such studies if there were not a creature called Odradek. At first glance, it looks like a flat, star-shaped spool for thread. And indeed, it does seem to have thread wound upon it. Uh, to be sure, these are only old, broken-off bits of thread, knotted and tangled together of the most varied sorts and colours. But it is not only a spool, for a small wooden crossbar sticks out of the middle of the star, and another smaller rod is joined to that at a right angle by means of this latter rod on one side and one of the points of the star on the other. The whole thing can stand upright, as if on two legs. One is tempted to believe that the creature once had some sort of intelligible shape, and is now only a broken down remnant. Yet this does not seem to be the case. Nowhere is there an unfinished or unbroken surface to suggest anything of the kind. The whole thing looks senseless enough, but in its own way, perfectly finished. In any case, closer scrutiny is impossible since is extraordinarily nimble and can never be laid hold of. He lurks by turns in the garret, the stairway, the lobbies, the entrance hall. Often for months on end, he is not to be seen. Then he has presumably moved into others' houses. But he always comes faithfully back to our house again. Many a time, when you go out the door and he happens just to be leaning directly beneath you against the banisters, you feel inclined to speak to him. Of course, you put no difficult questions to him. He is so diminutive, you cannot help but treat him like a child. Well, what's your name, you ask? He says, and where do you live? He says, and laughs, but it is only the kind of laughter that has no lungs behind it. It sounds rather like... And that is usually the end of the conversation. Even these answers are not always forthcoming. Often he stays mute for a long time, as wooden as his appearance. 
I ask myself to no purpose. What is likely to happen to him? Can he possibly die? Anything that dies has had some kind of aim in life, some kind of activity that has worn out. But that does not apply to... Am I to suppose then that he will always be rolling down the stairs with ends of thread trailing after him right before the feet of my children and my children's children? He does no harm to anyone that one can see, but the idea that he is likely to survive me I find almost painful. Mm -hmm.